Lots, lots of house rules. I, I hear the chatter. Every, all the dads are like, oh yeah, the daddy tax. We need to the insert that as a new house That's rule. A good idea. So today we're talking about baptism. And baptism at its sort of most fundamental level is joining the family of God, the household of God. And mm -hmm. the family of God has some house rules to it, okay? Not the daddy tax. I don't get as your pastor to come and take something out of your chips uh, bag. But no. we, th there's three simple rules of part, being part of the family of God. Do no harm, do good, and stay in love with God. Th those are the house rules for baptism. And we get these from John Wesley. Uh, we're familiar with John Wesley. He's the founder of the Methodist movement. He lived back in the 18th century in England. And he asked a really important question. He asked, how do we intentionally grow in our faith? How do we intentionally grow in our faith? So he and his friends had a very methodical way of doing that, thus the name Methodist. Methodist. They would gather together every day, and they would ask these three questions. Have you done any harm today? Is there any harm that you've done that you need to to confess and repent and repair of that harm. Have you done any good? Have you actively sought out opportunities to do good? Or were there, was there an opportunity to do good that you let pass by? And have you stayed in love with God? Have you showed up in the places that God said God would show up in? You all are here. You're at worship, in, in communion, in baptism, in prayer, in scripture. Each of these are places of where God shows up. Have to so, stay in love with God. So we've been doing this. We've asked these questions throughout this series, and we've been applying them to different areas of our lives. So we started this series by talking about political conversations. Ooh. And how do you take these three simple rules and apply them to political conversations? Then we continue with talking about community. And then last week we talked about parenting. Looking at these three simple rules, how do we apply these to these practical things we face? Yeah. You know, I think back to that first message that I gave, the three simple rules of political conversations. How do you do no harm, do good, and stay in love with God when you're talking with somebody you disagree with politically? Boy, after this weekend, th that message has never been more relevant, I That's think. That's really important. For, for how we talk across the divides, across the aisles. So if you missed that, Go back, look up on our YouTube, on Facebook page, watch that message because the way that we have this conversation following this weekend, we got to do no harm, we got to do good, we got to stay in love with God it's really uh, important. As, as a household of God and as a country. Absolutely. So That's the thing, these rules can be applied they to can be applied current to anything. things. Yeah, current yes. events, current events. So what we've done, and actually when you walked in, you were given a little packet and it has a, an inventory in it. So take that inventory out as the three simple rules. And you will see that, that each one, you know, do good mm -hmm. or do no harm, do good, stay in love with God, has a, a set of things kind of related to stuff that pops up on a regular basis in our culture today. And we're going we're gonna to walk through this a little bit. So keep that handy, okay? Hey, you want that in your hands. So today we're going to explore how these three simple rules play out in baptism. Uh, we're going to be talking about the three simple rules of baptism. Now, when we talk about that, we have three people who are being baptized today. This isn't just for the people who are being baptized. This is for all of us. Because again, we're, we're going to remind you throughout today to remember, your, remember baptism. your baptism. And one of the ways you're going to remember your baptism is through applying these three simple rules to whenever you were baptized, whether it was a teenager and you 13. remember it, or whether when you were a child and you don't fully remember it. And you're going to get to come up a little bit later on and remember your baptism as you well. So in the early church, in the really early church, the baptism included a, a preparation period. And that preparation period was usually one to two years. One to two years to prepare for baptism. I mean, Mark, we have like a, what, like a four-hour class? Yeah. I and think that I, feels like a lot. Yeah. Like, <laughs> what Everyone if we made it one to two years? baptized today is like, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> And, and part of that was a, a period of, like, you think about, like, the 12-step rules, and the fourth step in that is a searching, doing a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. And, and they took a year or two to do that, to courageously review themselves and ask these kinds of questions. That's really tough to do. So the first simple rule of baptism is to do no harm. And, and what this means is, each of us, in remembering our baptism, we look at ourselves and we look at the places where we're doing harm, and the first thing is 
Stop doing it. Stop doing it. <laughs> Stop doing it. And, and, and take responsibility for that harm by naming that harm. And then you know, the last part of doing no harm is really important. It's to repair the harm done as much as possible. And I, I think this is one that we can often forget how important it is to repair harm that has been done. So as you think about yourself today, and those of you who are being baptized, Gary and Nicole and Madison, I want to ask you to think about where have you done harm? Yeah, where, where have you allowed evil a room in your heart and in your mind? Where have you strayed from the path of love and justice? And I, Mark, when I think about this idea of repairing, I recently came across this uh, marriage counselor. His name is Terrence Real. He's been a marriage counselor for 25 years. Sarah and I just celebrated our 25th anniversary. Congratulations. So he's been counseling people as long as we've been married. And he wrote this book called Us, Getting Past You and Me to Build a More Loving Relationship. And in an interview with a news outlet, they asked him, how do we fail at repairing? How do we fail at that? And he compares repair work to customer service work. You know, like, Mark, if I come to you, you know, you work at a department store and I bring in, I'm like, my microwave's not working. Can, you need to repair it. And, I, and I, if I responded to you, well, I have a toaster at home and my toaster isn't working. And I'd be like, what does your toaster have to do with my microwave? But my toaster's my not microwave. working, Tom. Yeah, that, what would you call that customer service? <laughs> That's bad customer service, That's bad right? Bad customer like, service. Okay, you have you do have a real issue because your toaster does need to get fixed at some it point. It does. But that's not my problem. We're gonna focus right now. Like this is this is what repair work is about. When when someone's in a state of disrepair, you focus on repairing their microwave. You can get to your toaster later, okay? That's how repair work works. That is. And to do that repair, it requires some introspection. It requires some looking within yourself. And to do a fearless moral inventory, you don't just snap your fingers and two minutes later you're like, oh, I'm done. That was good. I, you know, I don't have anything to worry about. It, it's a process. And, and in this process, in this journey, what's going to happen is God will reveal something to you and you'll take care of it. And then God will reveal something else, and you'll take care of it. And there'll be a journey. And, and I would almost say that, that the further you go on the path toward love and justice, the longer you realize that that path is, the more room that you have to grow in this. All right, so this isn't a story about a path, but it is a story about a canoe and a journey. Okay. Last summer, my family did a three-day canoe camping trip on the Manistee River. Ooh, we took amazing. this picture uh, on day three when we started to enforce an hour of silence. <laughs> okay. <laughs> three days in a canoe with two kids and constant chatter. And, lot, and huh? about this point, we were thinking, when will this be done? <laughs> when will this be done? But you know what, Mark? <laughs> After three days, we had traveled 50 miles on the so Manistee River. Way. If we kept going to Lake Michigan, 200 miles to get to Lake Michigan. We had barely even scratched a lot further the possible go. journey. That's what this process of repenting and, and confessing and repairing is like. Yeah, I think the, the, the feeling of when is this going to end, which you experienced on the canoe trip, that, that can also be true in our lives, like literally, as we go through the process of rooting out sin in our lives. And I know that I've experienced this myself there's always more. Um, I'm on a 43-year journey in my life to become less independent and less stubborn in that independence. And at the root of that journey is, is me clinging to my pride. And so I'm humbled again and again and reminded of my need for dependence and to not be so stubborn. And I will think I've conquered my pride. I think I'm moving toward being more dependent, particularly on God and not independent. And I'll realize what happened is I I just released one finger, and the other four fingers are still hanging on tightly mm, to mm, my pride mm -hmm. and my independence. And then I'll release one more finger and one more finger, and then I'll realize all my toes are also clinging to this. <laughs> and maybe that's been your experience too. We try to root things out, and we realize just how deeply ingrained it is as part of us. It takes time. And that brings us to our next question for discussion. Our next question for discussion is, when was a time that you took a journey, and this could be literal, like me, or, or metaphorical, like, like Tom, you know, where maybe you took a trip somewhere, and it took longer than you thought. So you took a trip, it took longer than you thought. We're going to give you 90 seconds. Turn to someone near you and discuss this. Have you ever had this, where a journey took longer than you thought? <laughs> 